Hello, my name is Dr. Tracy Ann Cooper and I'll be your professor for your Summer Session 1 online course, History 1000, Emergence of a Global Society. That was a bit of a mouthful. Um, okay, so congratulations, you've made it onto the Blackboard site and uh, you clicked on the video and you're watching the video, so that's a large part of what you'll be doing, so you're halfway there uh, for the course. What I'm going to do in this video is just very, very, very briefly introduce uh, the subject matter of the course, um, talk about the book, talk about uh, strategies for, for reading the book. It's not the most simple of book, it's, it's, it's written at quite a sophisticated level. And uh, the assignments that you'll be doing and uh, some of the things you should uh, be looking out for in those. Um, and, um, and that's it. So I'm going to try and keep this under 10 minutes. My last one I did for my other class went over 20 minutes, but it's an upper level class. Okay, so um, the course, um, as the title suggests, is about um, the history of the world uh, since uh, 1300 and how the world became increasingly globalized, how people came into contact with each other, uh, what that contact uh, entailed um, about man's relationship with nature and about man's relationship with, with man two, three big themes that we'll be, that we'll be looking at. So we'll, beginning, uh, we'll begin with the Mongols, um, probably a little earlier than some other people teach this course, but I'm a medievalist, so I, I don't think you can begin world history uh, without thinking about the Mongols, because they create the biggest contiguous land empire stretching from China to the Middle East uh, up into Russia, and uh, this is really the first cog in bringing the, the world together because uh, it allows uh, trade and people to pass um, backwards and forwards across the map of the Eurasian landmass. Um, so we begin there and, and we end in the 20th century. Uh, so basically the course is quite thematic. It's probably been a little bit different than um, history courses we've taken in the past. Um, because there's not quite so much emphasis on um, remembering things chronologically, um, etc. Um, it really is much more thematically based. Uh, when you're dealing with world history, you're trying to deal with the history of all places at all times. And so what you're looking for are big themes uh, about um, how there are certain trends in world history, what that trend is, who fits into the trend and who doesn't fit into the trend. So within each chapter, you usually talk, you'll usually be reading about eight or nine spaces uh, around the world. And your job when you're reading is to pull that all together and understand the bigger point that's being made rather than suffer through the minutiae of what's happening in each individual place. So this is the book. Now, excuse me if I'm moving a little stiffly. I damaged my shoulder and I have, well, I'm wearing a sling. Uh, so, uh, so this is the book, uh, Armesto's, uh, uh, Felipe Armesto's, um, Fernandez Armesto's, uh, The World, The History. Uh, get the Penguin Academic Edition, because uh, then the page numbers will make sense uh, to everyone. Uh, it's not that expensive. You should already have it. If you don't already have it, uh, well, firstly, you're in trouble. You should already have had your uh, books in the summer course. Uh, but I do have um, the first couple of pages available as a PDF, uh, the first couple of chapters available as a PDF, if you've not managed that, and you'll just email me, uh, Cooper, T-C-O-O-P-E-R-T, -E at stjohn.edu, and I will uh, make those chapters available for you. Um, okay. So, every day, I'll, I'll talk about what we're going to do in the first day, because it's a little bit different. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. So every day, what you will do is um, log on to Blackboard. Uh, you will have a reading assignment for the day, uh, a chapter a day. And then you'll also be uh, uh, given a video to watch. And the link to the video is in Blackboard. It's quite simple. You just click on it and watch it. And uh, then you need to do a blog, uh, which answers a question. You're given a question, so it's fairly easy. You don't have to think about what you might want to say, really. Uh, so um, you answer the question, and the answer has to combine the what you've read and what you've watched. Okay. 
um, what you're looking for is to create a strong argument. You're not supposed to write a report, okay? The Mongols in 1345 did this, la, 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 la. Not going to happen. You're going to have to argue, and you need evidence for the, the points of your argument. So you ask the question, you answer the question with an argument, and you back that, that evidence that up with evidence. In the course manual that I sent you, and which is also uh, under course manual uh, on the Blackboard site, um, I've left, left fairly detailed instructions about what I expect uh, in these blocks. Uh, I've kind of categorized it under good, fair, and bad. So make sure you're not doing any of the bad stuff, and are trying your best to do the good stuff, and you, you'll be okay. Uh, one of the main things to um, note is that um, time management is usually where people fall down in online classes, especially in the summer where the pace is pretty quick. Um, you need to devote um, about five hours a day uh, on the class day uh, to uh, the course. Um, the course calendar is listed. It's on the um, information on the left-hand side. Everything you're going to click to is in the left-hand side. So you should... Um, you know, make sure you have a good look around there. So you can know what's coming up. Some of, them, some of the movies are actually an hour and a half long, so you need, need to know you've got time to, to, to set that in. And then everything is due by midnight. So you need to have read the chapter, uh, watch the movie, written the blog, and posted it. <clears throat> Another important part is you need to respond to the blogs of the other students. Um, so for this, the next morning or whenever in the next day, you'll log back on, you'll find the blogs that were posted uh, the day before, you respond to three of them, okay? They have to be substantial, around 50 to 75 word responses. Um, they have to really engage with what the students said, and they have to further the, the, the collective conversation of the class. So it's no good just logging on and saying, hey, good job, I liked your post. It's not going to get you anywhere. Okay. So the only opportunity for extra credit in the class is if you consistently uh, do five responses instead of three. And by consistently, I mean at least 15 times, okay? So that's the only opportunity for extra credit. I'll give you 5% on your total overall uh, grade, uh, grade at the end of the course. Uh, no other opportunities, so don't ask, okay? So don't miss. Don't miss assignments and don't miss a day that's going to really plummet your grade much more than you probably think. You know, if you've got um, five, uh, four, five assignments, you've got four A's, you miss the next one, you don't get an A minus, you get a C. That's just the math of it. It, it, it brings down your grade like that. Okay, so just don't miss. Uh, okay, so you'll read the book. There's a short online test, uh, 20 questions. Um, if you do this at home, I'm still expecting you to have the book in front of you. Uh, so if you need to look up an answer, you, you can. Um, you only have 40 minutes, uh, 45 minutes to do the test, though. So do the reading. You cannot possibly do this by looking up all the answers, and it would be kind of a silly thing to do anyway, because it misses why, why take a class and not actually take the class, really. Um, so you do the test, you watch the video, you write the blog, you post the blog. The next morning you get on. You read the blogs of other students, you make your comments, do your reading, take a test, etc., etc. That's the way the class goes. There's no surprise assignments in the middle of it. Uh, on the first day of class, as I said, a little bit different. Uh, you uh, log on. There's um, a blog to introduce yourself. Uh, please try your best to put a picture in there. Uh, and um, yeah, you introduce yourself, talk a little bit about how something that connects you to history, just to kind of get us going with thinking about history. You'll be watching um, a video called uh, In the Footsteps of Marco Polo, which I think is kind of humorous. It's about two guys from Queens who decide to recreate Marco Polo's journey and uh, uh, kind of mess up <laughs> uh, here, there, and everywhere. And uh, you know, the question is to think about just how difficult it is, it is to cross the Eurasian land masses uh, and try and give you an idea of how big that is. So then you... Uh, you shouldn't already know what the question is, okay? The question is on, uh, on, on, the, on the day's page, so, uh, you know, keep the question in mind so you can be uh, ready to answer it. And then your first uh, blog is to uh, provide a, a response to this video. And the next day, on the 30th, you would 
log on, you will read your responses to the other students, and then reading the test, watch the video, combine them in the question blog, etc. Okay, so hopefully that's completely clear. Everything you need is in the left-hand margin, as I said. Under um, assignments and activities, you'll notice that things are grouped uh, by uh, chapter numbers and the dates that things are due. So hopefully this makes perfect sense to you. Uh, look for the date, okay? You should be aware of what your calendar is uh, anyway. Um, and then below that, there is uh, information, uh, um, course calendar, yep. Yeah. Um, and then uh, course manual is anything I can think of you might need to know, I, I wrote uh, and, and put in there, okay? If you have any questions, make sure you check there first. I'm not going to be that thrilled if I keep getting emails from people about things that I've already addressed and have put on Blackboard for you, okay? So, you know, if you do have a particular problem, please don't feel shy to email me, but look there first, okay? Um, what else? Um, Tools, and under tools, you'll find your grades and uh, email addresses, okay, a link to email. My email, anyway, is cooper, T-C-O-O-P-E-R-T, at stjohns.edu, and, uh, you know, let, get in touch with me if you need to. You should also make a note of the number of the, the history department, uh, which is 990, okay, 718. 990-6229, and that will get you through to the department secretary. If something has gone horrendously wrong and uh, you have uh, a blackout or a hurricane or you can't get online, then you can at least let us know what's happening to you, okay? Um, just don't miss classes. That's, that's the main thing. Uh, and uh, don't make up bad excuses if you miss classes. Uh, okay, so what else do I want to say? Uh, well, not too much. <laughs> I think I'm nearly done. I've got a list here. You wonder what I keep looking at of, of things that I wanted to say. Um, welcome. I hope you have fun in the class. Um, read carefully. Read diligently. Um, you know, make sure you take the test. When, when, when you start the test, it all has to be completed in 45 minutes. It will automatically submit after 45 minutes. So if you start the test and your friend rings and then you go and make a and then whatever, and you come back, and you only answer two questions, that's what will be submitted. So it's really important that you get those 45 minutes in. Most people, it only takes like 10 minutes to take the quiz, so it's not big, uh, a, big, a big issue. Okay, so that's it, and I look forward to um, seeing all your introductory blogs. Um, you all should read each other's introductory blogs to get to know who your classmates are. Um, Obviously, in a, an online class, community is not quite the same as it is in an in-class class. But the introduction ex exercise should give you some idea of who your classmates are, that you're going to be responding to their blog. Uh, so take some time to, to, to read them. Leave a short comment, just say hello, and comment on something they've written. It's polite and getting to know you, okay? All right, so I will see you in the classroom. Bye.